Shadow Maker are pretty welcome. Yeah. I just like to see you guys have a beautiful life and fun and pray.
means not the gift that comes without consequences or without um, without meaning.
They embraced this inconvenient gift and they were willing to allow this gift to change their lives. But what about us? What about you? You know, for us, Jesus can be an inconvenient gift too. You know, he can interrupt our plans. He can change our lives. Instead of a life centered around me and all my plans and what I want to do, our life can be centered around Jesus. So are we willing, are you willing to let God disrupt your life plan? Are you willing to let him change your direction? There have been several times for Rebecca and I through our life, uh, our married life together, where God has interrupted and changed direction in our life. He's taken us from something that's comfortable and something that's known to something that's unknown and uncertain. For example, we were settled in a, in a place in Derbyshire. Uh, Mick was, had a job as an, an IT consultant, earning a good wage. Our children were born, we had two children. They were growing, we lived in a good community, we had a good church, friends around us. <clears throat> but then God said, it's time. It's time for you to give this up. It's time for you to go to Bible college. And it's something that I'll tell you when the time comes. So we sold our house, we moved, we uprooted, and we went to Bible College. We prepared to serve God somewhere in the world. We had no idea where that would be. We trusted Him. And we listened to Him, we followed His guide. And He has always provided for us. He's always taken us into something that is better than we could have ever imagined. But it's not always convenient. Sometimes Jesus is inconvenient. So do you trust him when he asks you to do something that's perhaps not very convenient for you, not part of your plan? Maybe even something that seems impossible. Do you trust him? Will you say to him, I am the Lord's servant. May your words be important. The next people that we're thinking about in our story and in the Christmas story are the shepherds. And for the shepherds, this news, this baby, was a gift to share. It was a gift to share with others. You know, the shepherds were a bit of an isolated group. They spent a lot of time in fields away from home. Because of that, they were they couldn't participate in the in the normal cultural things and religious things. They didn't get to synagogue or the temple as, as they should. And so they were, they were, they were a bit of outcasts in society. They were a little bit sort of on the edge of society. Jesus. They knew that this was something special. 
that this was something that was not just for them. This was something that they had to tell everybody about. You know, it, they could have just quietly returned to their fields and gone about their business and just talked amongst themselves about what they'd done. You know, it was probably the middle of the night anyway. You know, there were too many people around. They could have just very quietly gone back and continued with their lives. But they knew that they couldn't keep this to themselves. It was something far too important. And so we read that we read that you know they and when they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about. And all who heard it were saved. You know, they went around. We like to imagine you know, it's okay to use your imagination sometimes. You know, we like to imagine them going around and they're knocking on doors in the middle of the night saying, Do you know what happened? Do you know what we see? Maybe it wasn't like that, it may be, but we do know that they couldn't keep it to themselves. They had to share that with others. This was a gift that, as the angel had told them, he was going to bring great joy for all people. It was a gift for all people, not just for them. So again, what about us? What about you? You know, probably we're most of these ordinary people going about an ordinary life. And yet, if you have welcomed the gift of Jesus into your life, then what are you going to do with that? You know, you may not have had angels singing and, and, and waking you up in the middle of the night, or, you know, you may not have had anything dramatic. But we still have that same message from God, from God that Jesus is good news to all people. And if you haven't yet, you know, if you haven't yet accepted that way to you, that, that gift, then I want to just encourage you. Jesus is, is saying to you, I've come for you. And your response at the very least should be, well, let me go and see. And if you haven't done that yet, I really want to encourage you to say, I'll go and see. I'll go and investigate, like the shepherds did. I'll go and find out what it is that they're talking about, these people who believe in Jesus. So if you haven't yet investigated who Jesus is, please do that. Go and see. Go and investigate. Find out. But if you have invited Jesus to be part of your life, then it's not just for you. This news is far too important for it, for it to be just for you. It's for everyone. You need to share it. You know, do we get excited about who Jesus is and what he's done for us? So excited that we go and tell the people. You know, when we discover something that we that's amazing, you know, maybe some some uh, when you hear, uh, you know, the latest song from a group that you love, and think, oh, it's fantastic, we're going to tell everybody about it. Or, or, you know, something that you find that's really amazing product that does something wonderful. You, you think, I'm going to go and tell everybody, this is brilliant. You know, have you heard? Do we do that about Jesus? Do we get so excited about Jesus that we say, this is what Jesus has done to me. I need to tell you about it. It's not just for you. It's made for sharing. And we went to have a family meal recently, and uh, I ordered a dessert. As you may know, I love anything sweet and that's unhealthy. And, um, and for me, the best part of the meal is the dessert. And I ordered a dessert that sounded absolutely delicious. But when it came, it was enormous. There was no way that I could eat it by myself. I could never be a, a dessert to share me. You know, it was way too big for me to eat by myself. Jesus is like that, you know. He's too big. He's oh, just you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. He's given to you to share. To share Jesus and give him time to share. But for the next person that we remember in our story, Jesus was a very unwelcome gift. We think about King Herod. King Herod was an insecure king. And he was always looking around to see who was there to try and take his throne. He killed most of his family in order to keep his throne. The last thing he needed was another rival king. And we read in Matthew chapter 2, verse 3, when King Herod heard this about this new king, baby that had been born, he was disturbed with all Jerusalem with him. This was very unwelcome. It threatened his position, it threatened his authority. All of Jerusalem were disturbed because they knew what Herod was like. They knew how he would respond. Um, if we know the Christmas story, we know that he would go to any length 
kind of really not big baby, busy wet, big flow. And you might think, well, what's that got to do with me? But you know, Jesus comes not just as a baby, he comes as a king. He wants to be king on the throne of your life. He wants to knock you off your throne, and he wants to be there on the throne. You know, Jesus is not just that cute baby who lives in the manger. But as a man, he's the one who said, anyone who loves their father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves their son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Whoever does not take up their cross to follow me is not worthy of me. Jesus demands a lot from us. He is a free gift, but he wants all of us. Amen. And he wants to be king in our life. So is that gift, is that Jesus welcome, a welcome gift to you? Are you willing to let him be king? Will you welcome King Jesus, not just baby Jesus, into your life? Moving further on in our story, we have a couple of people who probably maybe don't get much, don't get much uh, press in, in the Christmas story. They don't probably come in and into the plays and things like that. But they're very much part of the story, and that's Simeon and Anna. Two people of God, a man and a woman of God, who were waiting for the promised Messiah. Of course, all Jews were waiting for the promised Messiah, but these two were close to God, they were listening to God, they spent much of their time in the temple waiting for God. And for them, this gift was a promised gift. When they saw baby Jesus brought to the temple when they were eight days old, they saw Jesus and they knew that this was the fulfillment of their life. They were surrounded by other people in the temple who had no clue as to who this baby was, but they knew, they recognized, they responded by worshiping him. He was the answer to their prayer. And for us too, you know, God is that promised gift. Jesus is that promised gift from God. He brings us that forgiveness, that new life that only Him as a gift can bring us. And then He makes us many more kind of promises. If we read the Bible, there are many promises for those who follow Jesus. And maybe He promised you personal things too. And sometimes He makes us a personal promise of something that He's going to do in our lives. Simeon and Anna waited almost their whole life before they saw the fulfillment of their promise. They never stopped believing. They knew that God would fulfill that. So for you, I pray that Jesus will be that promised gift. Keep believing, keep hoping, and keep trusting. Keep close to God and keep listening to Him. If you're waiting for something, for the fulfillment of a promise, Jesus is that fulfillment. And he will fulfill his promises in his time. That's where he did well. And finally, the, the wise men. So the wise men, he was an incomparable gift. You know, these these wise men, they, they, they were from a different culture, from a different place, from a different race, from a different craft, a different location. And so first of all, they tell us that this gift is for everyone, this gift of Jesus. Wasn't just for the Jews, wasn't just for the poor, but also it was for the wealthy. It wasn't just for those who, who were desperate and needy, but it was also those who seemingly had everything. But when they saw that star, they knew it was a sign of something incomparable, something that they didn't already have. You know, they would have already had other gods that they worshipped, they would have had wealth. They would have had position, they had learning. But this star, this sign, told them something incomparable. Something way above everything that they already had. Something that was worth leaving all that behind and traveling for miles and miles to see. To leave what was comfortable and what they knew to go and meet this new king, this new God. And again, for us, that is sometimes the hardest time to follow Jesus, because it's times when everything is going well. 
you know, when we're in trouble or we're in difficulties, then it can be natural to us to, to turn to Jesus and we hold on to Jesus. We think, I need you at this time. But when everything's going well, good job, money comes in, pay your bills, extras, you know, you've got a good family around you, everything, everything's great. And at times like that, we can think, oh, I don't really need God. Moments of us can just keep on one side of us. But actually, we need God just as much in those times. Jesus is an incomparable gift. He is way above anything that this world can give us. Jesus told a story, didn't he, about someone who found the pearl beyond price, that pearl that was greater than anything else that they, that they had ever seen. And they sold everything in order to get that pearl. Whatever you've got at the moment, Jesus is wonderful. He is great. Yeah. And it's worth leaving whatever you need to leave behind in order to follow Jesus. I've already talked about following Jesus out of our consequence. Being willing to do things that he calls us to do. You know, what would you rather have? A comfortable life without Jesus? Or a life moving into the unknown and the uncertain, but with Jesus by your side. I know which I would choose. And I know which we have chosen many times, many times together. Not to say it's easy, but when you've got Jesus by your side. Jesus is that incomparable gift for you. He came for you. He gave everything up. He came out of his comfort. You know, he was in heaven with his father, a place of, of beauty, a place of glory, a place where there was no pain, no suffering, where he had power and authority. And he came and chose to be a helpless baby in a poor family, living, growing up with a life that was challenging and difficult. To die on that cross. You know, he stepped out of his comfort zone for you. So are you willing to give up whatever he asks you to give up in order to serve him and to follow him? One of my favourite quotes comes from Jim Elliot, who was a missionary in uh, Ecuador and who gave his life taking the gospel to the Maori tribe of uh, Indians in Ecuador. And he said this, he said, he is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot keep. He is no fool who gives what he cannot keep to gain what he cannot keep. Jesus is a life-changing gift. He is the greatest gift. And he is a life-changing gift. He's a gift that comes, maybe not with a sting in the tail, but a gift that comes with, with consequences. Nothing will ever be the same again when you accept Jesus as your king. Every character, every person in the Christmas story who met Jesus, their lives have changed. Their lives have changed forever. We don't know what went on, you know, what the shepherds went on to do, or the wise men, what their lives were like after. But we guarantee it would have been changed forever by meeting Jesus. Jesus comes. The greatest gift, a gift that is free for all of us to accept. When we accept that gift, then we also need to trust in him and follow him. So if you haven't yet accepted the gift of Jesus, I want to encourage you. Encourage you to go and see, like the shepherds, go and see, like the wise men, go and find out who this person is. Explore who Jesus is for yourself. If you've already accepted him as your Lord and your Savior, then expect him to change your life. Expect him to challenge you. Expect him to, to bless you and to, to give you the promises that he's given. But he will also change your life because he wants to be the king in your life. The king in the manger, not just.
Yeah, yeah, yeah. 